As you can see, the sun's not even up yet. It's about 6.30 a.m. on a weekend here. Um, gonna try and get on a top water bite here for trout. It's a high tide right now in the grass, about a five foot tide right here, six foot swing, but uh, five foot tide going on right now. Sun hasn't come up past the clouds yet, um, but we're gonna get on top water. I'm gonna use a skitter walk to start, and then I might go to a skitter V, uh, just change things up for a bit. After the sun comes up, we'll mix it up as the tide starts to drop a little bit again. And we'll, we'll probably go with the grub on the bottom or, or fish the whole water column. So uh, if you're new to the channel, my name's Kevin. I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, please feel free to share it. You know the whole deal. It um, really helps out the channel, uh, helps spread the word, and it keeps me going, keeps me confident. Here we go. All right, we're starting off with a skitter walk right here. Okay, color doesn't really matter, but I think this one imitates a finger mullet, which will be coming out of the creeks here. As you can see, I used this one yesterday with a buddy. Didn't do a film, but uh, we were doing top water going for redfish, and the trout were smacking it. So um, this should get the ticket. This should, or excuse me, this bait here should get the job done. All right. I actually, too, another note here. Didn't go. I just went with a uni knot. Don't really need to with these skitter walks. Everyone's so fanatic about and finicky about, oh, you need to do a loop knot and all that stuff. Not really on top water when you're going for trout. They're gonna smack it if they're hungry. We'll find out right now. All right, throw at the point. Try and bring it by. There's a shell bank right here and it drops all very deep. Tide rips around it. So there's a blow up. First one. Oh, there's another, good. Come on, there's twice. Hit that thing, baby, that's it. Oh yeah, come on. And we're on. Ah, he come off. That's it, that's what we're looking for. See, this will still walk the dog, even without that loop knot. So, don't be too, don't be too scared to tie on your favorite knot um, with these top waters. It's just all about the cadence. If you can get it to walk the dog and go back and forth, because um, I know some people were complaining about, or not complaining, we're writing, some people were writing to me about the loop knot, uh, like their knot is coming out, it's not sec secure, so you got to really practice it a lot too. Um, it's just like anything, I played soccer growing up, you're not going to go out and score a thousand goals without practicing. So same thing with your knots, practice, 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 but if you just want to tie on a regular one, I know here uh, in the local area, fish are going to hit the top water as long as you can get this cadence going back and forth like that. That's all it is. It's the twitch, twitch, pause. See? Loop knot or not, they're going to hit it. So be confident in your knots. It's the main thing. And that's where we want it. Just off the point a little bit, a little bit deeper. But moving current. There he is, and I'm tight. That's the spot. I don't know if you can see it. That's a trout. I don't know if you can see it well. But where that starts to... Mm. where that rip starts to come around this point here that's where they're going to be sitting to ambush nice little trout here a little 14 incher all right i'm just going to show you the fish here and then i'm going to, i got the trebles on here so got to be careful i've taken these in the in the hand before so got to be very careful this guy might be able to come off without my pliers, but I'll put a link in the description up top here in the right where I caught the treble in hand. But there's your fish right there, first one of the day. He's actually only about 13 or so. Very hungry fish. See you, buddy. All right, that's exactly on the point. So that grass is a good spot for them to sit in too and come out and, and attack an ambush. Oh, there's a big blow up. Come back up, come on, come on. 
That was a nice fish. Actually, there he is, yep. That's a nice one. All right, big head shakes. All right, brother. You hungry. Another trout, a little bit bigger here. Oh yeah, that's a nice trout. Okay. Great trout right there, okay? Nice one on your top water plug. Again, with the trebles, I love to use this big guy here. Um, used to use it bass fishing back growing up when I was a little kid in the, in the uh, little irrigation ponds and all that. When they choked one down there, you know, a little bit deeper in their mouth. Um, it's good to have this long one, but this here with the trebles does a great job. You don't have to get your hand by it or anything. Those things are very dangerous. So nice fish there. You're looking at 14 and a half, 15 inch trout. Getting back. See you, dude. That guy was hungry. I mean, he smashed it twice in a row. A lot of people, when they miss a blow up, ah, they throw their hands up and then reel it in real quick and try and throw back. Throw it, leave it in there, let it sit for a second or two, keep twitching. They will follow it. Trout are very, very aggressive fish. And once they hit it, they think they stun it if you stop there for a little bit and then twitch again, they'll come right back and nail it. All right, I just saw something blow up here on some mullet. Woo! Little swirl. Yep, another little swirl. Come on, come on. Come on, go tight, go tight. That's it, he missed it again. See, look, I'll do it all the way back to the boat, see if he'll keep coming. He may even go tight right here at the boat. Yep, still there on it. <laughs> That's cool. Followed all the way to the boat, that was a trout. Awesome. All right, try the point. There he is. Yep, come right up for it there. Give it a nice smack. Man, this is fun. Can't beat a top water bite, and it's only going to get better, and the fish will get bigger as the fall starts coming in here. The water starts dropping. Another little trout. Get a good hold of them before you mess with these trebles. There he is. See you, brother. All right, that's three down in about 10 minutes, so, and a ton of blow-ups. Um, I'm probably not gonna show them all in this video, I'm gonna edit them out, but if I get a big blow-up, you know, and I'm explaining something, I'll keep it in there for you, but just seem to be in the moving water, and when the bait fish are running along the grass line, they're gonna come out, come out and ambush them, so you gotta find those spots. Anything that looks good, don't pass it up. It could even be a brand new spot for you. Just give it a shot. That's how you find fish. You can't always go to the same spots. You gotta move and find, try and locate new spots. A little further out now, in the moving current. See who's there, just off that deep little cut. There he is. Nice strike. All right. Hooked up again, baby. Fourth fish, you know, 15 minutes or so. He's croaking, that's a male. That is a male. Nice trout. All right, thanks for coming. See you, bud. Very tight here, very tight to the corner. This should, should entice a bite. I mean, that's where they wanna be sitting, right around there. Yep, 
I was right. Come on, come back. There he is, and we're tight. Exactly where you want it. Another trout, baby. <clears throat> Good hit. All right. There we go. Just gonna shake him off real quick. I don't wanna hurt him, he's got it in the back here. A little twitch and he's gone. He'll be fine. Fre uh, saltwater fish a lot stronger than a freshwater fish, man. They will live through anything. If you're not sure, try mud minnows. <laughs> Buy some in the cooler months. You can put them right in just a little Tupperware uh, container with a wet towel or some seaweed and they will live for a couple hours uh, we used to buy them like that growing up they used to sell them by the pint oh there's a blow up come on back so he missed it there's a trout blow up Let's see if you come back now but used to buy them by the pint and they would sell them in a pint with just a little bit of seaweed or a damp towel and you know we'd take them out to our spot at least an hour or so and they're still good to go amazing little creatures some of the best bait my favorite are finger mullet if i was going to fish live bait but man you put on that you know you put those mud minnows in you want something to last that's it now if you don't get hits for a couple casts just move out a little bit about 15 degrees if i'm throwing there I'll, I'll throw 15 degrees to the left or right um and the fish may move as the tide drops they're not just going to sit in the same spot that's the awesome part about fishing. You got it. There he is. Just jumped out of the water for it. You got to find where they're at. I cast it three times over there. Uh, nothing doing. So I said, oh, let me just cast over a little bit, about 15 degrees, and we're on. They will move. They will move. Such an aggressive fish. It's fun to, fun to fish for. All right, brother, go up. Okay, here's another trick most people don't really do with a topwater bait. Okay, I'm going to put some procure on it. As the sun comes up and the fish bite starts to get a little bit less aggressive, you'd be surprised what happens here. You don't have to really kill it on there, but just rub it in there a little bit, a little bit here, smear it around here and there, a um, little bit on this side and that side, because um, it will leave a trail in that water. Okay, and it will really turn on that bite. So if it starts to slow up a little bit, throw this on and you'll see a world difference. I'll show you right here. All right, we're sending it up, pro cure on. Gonna throw out deep, see if the big boys are out there. I'm in the moving current now. And as I get closer to the boat, uh, they should, and we come out of that current a little bit, as it rips this point, rips around this corner, they should be hitting there at least sitting there, see if they're hitting as well. See if I can't get hooked up. Right there, now it starts to come back in. Cool little spot, there he is, and he's on. That's actually a nice fish. All right, he came up and smacked it. I believe we've got another trout on here. This is a nicer one, oh yeah, oh yeah, nice fish, nice fish. Oh, there we go. Big boy right there. Nice. That's about 17, 17 and a half. Okay. Crushed it. You can see the scent, the bait I put on there. Okay. Bait scent, Procure. Using crab, I believe. Blue crab flavor right now or shedder crab. It doesn't really matter, but there's your fish, man. Great blow up. Okay. That's how it's done. All right, coming to the end of this tutorial with the top water bite, skitter walk, but just want to show you how quickly that top water will shut off. It is now about 20 after 8 in the morning. Uh, the fish have completely sh shut off on the top water. They're still busting baits out here. All right, so let's cast it out there. Let's see if we can't prove the theory correct that once they shut off on top, they're still in that area. Um, they're just not going to come up when that sun hits its spot where it can rise over the top of the, of the water. Okay, it's almost like someone's looking down on you and they can see you. Okay, I don't know whether it's because of birds that come on top, but you can just see a little bit better. And there we go. First cast. All right. 
right in the same spot where they've been blowing up and, and chasing the top water and swirling on it. Um, we'll have, probably have another trout here. Yep, and that's the case. So right there. Once the top water shuts off, throw in there with a grub, something that's a little bit deeper. Um, or even this one, a DOA popping cork. As it gets a little bit brighter, I'll even probably go to, I would probably even go to a, uh, to a jig head um, down on the bottom. All right, so that's it. See you later, brother. Okay, that's going to do it for today's tutorial on how to catch trout or any kind of fish on top water. We used a skitter walk this morning, okay, by Rapala or Rapala, however you want to pronounce it. This one's got a blue top to it, okay. You can also use, I like to use a green one once in a while. Uh, I have also used one in the previous video uh, that was yellow on top. It doesn't really seem to matter too much the color early in the morning. Uh, and then I went ahead and, and, you know, a little extra top off when it started to slow down and put some Procure on it. This is blue crab. doesn't really matter the, the scent that you use. Also, I'm sure you've noticed in my last video, but um, if you haven't, I've also teamed up with Waterland Fishing Optics to be part of the staff here. Uh, and as the sun started to come up, it was amazing how these glasses cut the, cut the glare. Uh, I was able to see the fish actually following it. Um, and, and swirling on it almost nearly up to the boat from about 20 to 30 feet away. So um, really appreciate this. If, you, if you're interested in a pair, uh, go ahead. I'll put a link in the description below. I have a code to a discount code where you can get 15% off. Um, and I'll also put a link to the website. So that being said, I hope you all have a great day or evening whenever you're watching this. And be ready for the next video coming out next week. Take care.